Sonic, the heart of your system. Alright guys, Dominic here for Kitgu, and this system beside me is the MSI Trident X. So in a nutshell, this is a pre-built system with some of the latest hardware inside. It's got the Intel i7-9700K, as well as the RTX 2080 graphics card. Alongside that, we also have a Z372 motherboard. There's 32GB of 2666MHz DDR4 memory, and in terms of storage, we have a 512GB SSD with a 2TB hard drive, and rounding that all off, is a 650 watt 80 plus gold power supply. So for £2,699, is the MSI Trident X worth buying? Well, we'll start off with a look at the design, and the first thing to note really is just how compact this system is. It actually measures less than 13 centimeters across, it's less than 39 centimeters deep, and less than 40 centimeters tall. So here you can see I've compared it to the Xbox One X, and while it's not quite as compact across every dimension, it's definitely in the same ballpark. So considering actually the really impressive, the quite fast hardware inside this system, it is actually really compact considering the hardware you get. While we're also talking about the kind of exterior of the system, it is worth noting there's actually a choice of side panels for the right hand side of the system. So by default, this kind of plain steel panel that it still has ventilation for the CPU fan, but relatively standard plain steel panel that comes on by default but if you want you can actually switch this out for a tempered glass panel not only is it a good looking tempered glass panel which I like but it's actually attached by a hinge so you know you can open and close it just like a door so obviously if you want to get inside uh, maybe tinker with something pretty quickly it's a lot easier to do than having to unscrew the side panel while I certainly like having the choice of side panel and me personally I'd go tempered glass all day long I really think it's an interesting decision that MSI's made the panel that is interchangeable. They've put that on the right hand side of the system. So for most of us, if we sit at our desk, the PC is on our right. So the right hand side panel of that is actually going to be on the other side. So we won't be able to see it. So obviously if you're a left hander and maybe you've got your PC on your left hand side, you're in luck. But for most of us, I think probably it should have been the left hand side panel, which is the one you can actually switch out and put the glass on if you want. Before moving on to talk about the internal components though, it's just worth looking at the I.O. So starting with the front panel, here we've got the main things are two USB 3.1 Gen 1 ports, one's a Type-A and one's a Type-C, while there's also a single Type-A USB 2.0 as well as our audio jacks. On the rear of the system now, from the graphics card obviously we get the standard RTX 2080 video output, so that's three display ports, one HDMI and one USB-C. Whereas from the mother world, we get a total of six USB options. So two of those are USB 3.1 Gen 2, two are USB 3.1 Gen 1, and then we get another two sets of USB 2.0 ports. And also on the motherboard, there's um, RJ45, you know, there's a bunch of audio jacks, as well as a couple of video outputs from the motherboard itself. So moving on to look at the internal components, the first thing really to note is the Silent Storm Cooling 3 approach that MSI has taken with the Trident X. So Silent Storm Cooling 3, it's a bit of a mouthful. It's essentially the idea that you keep your, you know, your processor and your graphics card separate, the two hottest components in the build, you keep them in separate chambers, and that way they won't kind of heat each other up as they're stressed. So as you can see on the right hand side of the system at the bottom we've got the CPU and motherboard area whereas on the left hand side of the system at the top this section here we've got the graphics card. So we'll start off with the motherboard and the processor area. The motherboard itself is actually the Z370i Gaming Pro Carbon AC so that's just a standard off the shelf ICX motherboard from MSI. The fact that it's Z370 not Z390 doesn't really bother me. It would obviously be nice to have the latest thing but obviously the difference in the chipset really comes down to just native USB 3.1 Gen 2 support as well as inbuilt Wi-Fi. So considering this motherboard has those features anyway, for me it's really not a big deal. The processor as well as we mentioned is the i7-9700K which is 8 core 8 threads whereas the 9900K is 8 core 16 thread because it has hyper threading but we're going to look a little bit more about performance later. Though it is worth noting this processor has not been overclocked, though still at stock it will boost to 4.6 GHz across all cores. Cooling that processor is um, you know, a fairly average looking low profile cooler, it's got 5 heat pipes and a single 120mm fan. And just to the left of that you can maybe just about see the two 16GB modules of DDR4 memory at 2666MHz. 
The frequency I think is fine, it's obviously not the fastest out there, but it doesn't matter as much for an Intel platform as for AMD. The thing that bothers me though is that MSI has gone with these kind of ugly plain green dims, so you know there's no heat spread or anything like that. In fairness, you know, you really can't see them at all. They're obscured not only by the CPU cooler's fan, but also by the motherboard's 24 pin cable. So very hard to actually see the memory, but you will still know it's there. And for me, it is a corner cut to not bother putting some heat spreaded RAM on there instead. Now, moving over to the other side of the system, we of course have the graphics card at the top. This is attached via a PCIe riser card, and it is the Ventus RTX 2080, which is obviously from MSI's own lineup. So it looks like a pretty decent card actually, I've not reviewed it, but it's a dual fan configuration and it also comes overclocked to 1800 megahertz. So again, we're gonna look at performance in a little bit, but worth saying, it looks like a pretty decent off the shelf graphics card. Just below that, obviously, because this is, is the rear of the motherboard, we've got a single M.2 slot, and this is occupied by a 512 gigabyte Samsung PM981. If you're not familiar with that drive, it is essentially the OEM version of the Samsung 970 Evo, which is a hugely popular NVMe drive. So it is, again, good to see that included in this system. And if we quickly flip back to the CPU side, we can see there is also a secondary two terabyte Seagate Barracuda hard drive for all your mass storage needs. Before moving on as well, you can see this fan in the bottom corner. That belongs to the power supply, which is an SFX unit. And of course, that is 650 watts, 80 plus gold, as we mentioned. But on that note, it is good to see MSI has gone with 80 plus gold. The last MSI pre-built I reviewed, which was probably two or three months ago now, that was the Aegis 3, and that only had an 80 plus bronze unit. And I really think when you're spending this much money on the system, it really should be 80 plus gold at the minimum. So good job for MSI, including that with the Trident X. Now, lastly, in terms of design, we do of course have to touch on RGB lighting just before we move on to performance. So there's actually three different RGB zones for the Trident X. The first is the RGB fan on the CPU cooler, and there's also two little RGB strips on the front panel of the case itself, whereas the last zone is just one RGB strip just above the graphics card, and this is all configurable within MSI's Mystic Light app, which actually comes pre-installed on the system, so you don't even have to download it. For me, I actually think the RGB looks really, really good. It's nice and bright. The colors are nice and coordinated and all looks in sync. There's obviously, being an all MSI, you don't have to compete with any other kind of RGB ecosystems. So on the whole, very effective and overall good looking RGB. Now we're gonna move on to performance, and as we mentioned, it's a stock clocked i7-9700K, as well as a factory overclocked RTX 2080, which runs with an 1800 MHz boost clock. Starting with Cinebench, we can see the difference between the 9700K in this system versus the 9900K in the Asus ROG GL12CX, which I reviewed recently. The 9700K is about 600 points slower. However, if we look at 3D Mark and games, we can actually see the Trident X takes maybe one or two FPS lead over that Asus ROG system, and that's because the GPU itself is factory overclocked, whereas the Asus system used a reference clock model. Now, that also goes to show as well that eight physical cores is more than enough when it comes to modern games. You don't necessarily need the hyper-threading. We can see actually that the frame rates are very, very good across all of the games we tested. For me, I think it's best for a high refresh rate 1440p monitor, although you can still game at 4K and the frame rates will probably be around the 40 to 50 FPS zone. So performance is all well and good as we really would expect from a system with a 9700K and RTX 2080. But what about thermals? I must confess, when I first got the system delivered to me, I thought with maybe with a relatively basic looking profile cooler and considering how small it is, I thought thermals might be an issue. So to test that, we actually ran a number of different tests across the CPU and GPU. We looked at gaming, we looked at IDA64, Cinebench, as well as Prime95. And for the CPU, it actually peaked no hotter than 79 degrees, which I think is actually a really, really impressive result. And if that was in Prime 95, so if you're only gaming as well, we didn't see it top 66 degrees. The Ventus RTX 2080 as well, again, looks like a really competent unit. That didn't get any hotter than 69 degrees. And again, that was when running Shadow of the Tomb Raider at 4K. In fairness, when assessing the thermals, we do have to say that the CPU, of course, is stock clocked. 
But even then, it's still eight physical cores, and when under load, the stock clock CPU is still hit 4.6 gigahertz across all cores. And that frequency actually held steady regardless of the load. So Cinebench, ID64, and Prime95, it was still running at 4.6 gigahertz consistently. So eight physical cores at 4.6 gigahertz in a system this small, I think is actually pretty good going. Moving on now, I would have to say that the noise levels of the Trident X are actually arguably even more impressive than the thermal performance. That's because regardless whether it was either 64 stressing both the CPU and the GPU, or it was playing Shell of the Tomb Raider at 4K, total noise output from the Trident X didn't exceed 44 decibels. If we compare that now to the Asus ROG GL12CX that I reviewed a few weeks ago, that system actually peaked at over 60 decibels, and considering how much bigger it is than this really compact ITX rig, it's actually significantly louder as well. So MSI Silent Storm Cooling, you really have to you give them credit here, it actually seemed to work really, really well, and the thermals are good, and the noise levels are really, really impressive as well. In real world terms, if you put the MSI Trine X under your desk and started playing some games, you would barely hear it. It is audible, but it's actually very easy on the ears, it's not whiny at all, so overall the noise levels are very, very impressive. The last area to touch on is power consumption, and we saw this MSI Trident X draw around 290 to 300 watts, depending on whether it was Ida 64 or Shadow of the Tomb Raider. And considering it's a 650 watt power supply in there, that means the PSU is operating at just under 50% load, so you know, pretty much in the peak efficiency zone. It is worth pointing out though, as it's an ITX motherboard, there is of course no scope for SLI. So then wrapping up this review of the MSI Trident X, overall I have to say it's actually a really, really impressive machine. For me, it ticks all the main boxes. So it's very compact, it's good looking. I, I really like the RGB for instance. I think the whole compact nature looks really, really good. And it's actually fast as we would expect from the hardware, but it's also really cool and really quiet as well. So overall, you're getting a pretty complete package. If I had to nitpick, I would say there are probably two small issues I would pick out. For instance, the tempered glass side panel. For me, that is going on the wrong side. It really should be on the left-hand side of the case. And the second thing is the fact that MSI has still gone with the plain green PCB memory modules. I really think they should at least be going with kind of like plain black heat spreaders when you are spending this much. Although, as I mentioned, in fairness, you can hardly see it because the memory modules themselves are very well obscured by the other hardware in the motherboard area. The biggest issue for this MSI Trident X, however, is pricing, and that's because it's currently out for pre-order at £2,699. If you were to build a very similar system yourself, I spec'd up the cost of that to be just over £2,000. So that means you're essentially paying a £700 price premium over the total cost of the components. Now, in fairness, we would usually expect maybe a 300 or 400 pound price premium, considering after all, it is being built for you, it's being shipped for you, and it is being covered by warranty. That does mean though, for 700 pounds over the total cost of the components, the MSI Trident X is definitely on the pricey side, although in fairness, again, you are paying for the smaller form factor. Even then though, for 2,699 pounds, you are getting a very, very solid machine. It's a very capable all-rounder, and as I mentioned, for me, it ticks all the major boxes. So while it is definitely slightly on the pricey side, the MSI Trident X on the whole is probably one of the best compact pre-built systems I've ever reviewed. So at the end of the day, all I can really say is good job MSI, this is a very capable little system. So I'm Dominic Forkit Guru and this has been my review of the MSI Trident X. Do leave us a like and let us know in the comments below what you think of the system. Do you like how small it is and what do you think of the price premium you're paying? If you're new as well to Kit Guru, be sure to subscribe. I know I've got plenty of RTX graphics cards to get through myself. We've also got a range of gaming laptops, gaming peripherals and all that kind of stuff coming very, very soon. So if you don't want to miss any of that content, be sure to hit the little bell icon and you'll be notified about all of our future videos. Until then though, I'm Dominic Forkit Guru and I'll see you in the next video.